I'll maybe repeat a few scriptures I said last week and go somewhere else with them. The Lord said in Genesis 6, 3, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. And I also quote another scripture from Ezekiel. I don't have it here, but uh, the gist of it is, he says to Ezekiel, Thou shalt not be a reprover unto these people. But I'll give you a word and say, Thus saith the Lord. You stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord. But there wasn't... Uh, so what I mean is... Uh, as sin uh, abounds, as iniquity abounds, both, we've heard the issues there, where sin abounds, grace doth much more abound, where iniquity abounds, the love of many waxes cold. So, in a condition like that, and coming to the end of the age, God's Spirit is not as apt to strive with, with man. And last week, those of you you weren't here last week. Last week we we're trying to give examples of striving with. You, God will actually strive with. You know, God, we'll we'll hear things about the Word of God and about the things that constitute fulfilling His will and the things that constitute salvation and and the hardships and the troubles of bearing the cross and the sufferings and so forth. And you know, now this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? You know, sometimes it, it's a hard saying. Sometimes it's. Uh, Sometimes we kick at it or we offer a challenge back to God. And so God is willing to strive. He's willing to explain it a little further and work with us so that it could sit well in our conscience. Right? You, you, you know what I'm saying? So, and then, then a, a, Abraham, well, Lord, surely the uh, God of all flesh will do right, won't you? I mean, if there's 50 people in Sodom that are righteous, you're not going to destroy the righteous with the wicked, are you? See, he's, there's something, well, we know he's, he's interceding for Lot. Mm -hmm. But see, he's entered into a exercise of striving with God to the point of almost implying against the integrity of God. Because in simplicity, everything God does is right, right? Yeah. Case closed, right? God is righteous. There's no iniquity in God. Everything He does is right. Should be. So why do you need to say, "Huh, God, be a part"? You wouldn't destroy the righteous with the wicked, would you? <laughs> See what I mean? Right. His humanity is there, mm -hmm. and he's so he's he's, all, he's he's entered into a striving with God. And of course, as I said before, because because Abraham was the friend of God. <laughs> God was willing to strive with him. No, Abraham, if there's 50 righteous, I will spare the place for their sakes. Well, let me take it upon myself, who am but dust and ashes, if there's but 40 God would, uh, you know. So he goes through that whole exercise, and you, you all know it. Sure. Well, God's willing to strive, you know. Amen. Amen. Well, what if, what if God got up and said, Shut your mouth, Abraham. I'm God, and you know I'm right. How dare you challenge me like that? Could God have done that? Sure, well, he, he could have. Sure, he could have. If he wanted to. <laughs> he wanted to. Right. But this is Abraham, the friend of God. See? Amen. So, we'll so are you brothers or are you sisters or are you, are you swine and dogs and heathen? And, uh, you know, that would make a difference, I suppose, right? David, even David said uh, concerning God's people, he said, Surely God, my goodness extends not, not to you. Me. Not It's just not between my goodness and, you know, my goodness and my appreciation and the expression of my charity isn't just to you alone as God. My goodness extendeth not, not to thee, but to the saints in the earth. Yeah, amen. To the excellent, he said, in whom is all your delight. See, so God does. So God has a certain delight in his people. Amen. He has a certain delight in his people. Amen. A certain affection for his people. A certain towardness. But even now in uh, uh, this age, his willingness to strive is waning. It's going away. I'm getting tired of striving. And then I gave an example between brothers. If uh, I'm on a job and a brother's helping me and, uh, and I say to a brother, Here, brother, uh, use this tool to remove those nails. It's a... And then the brother might say, Well, why do I have to use that tool? I have a hammer in my hand. I can remove it with the hammer. All right, so that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Now you could just say, "Well, just do what I say." You know, why can't the brother just do what I say? Okay, or you know, if we're brothers, if we're friends, uh, I might strive with him. I might enter into a dialogue and try to give him an ex explanation 
to appease his conscience. Well, brother, see, this is called a uh, tiger paw. And what you can do is you can hammer it in and it digs yeah. under the wood. You see, so it makes it a little easier to grab the head of the nail. And that's why I would like you to use this tool. Yeah, yeah. And if my brother listens to me, then I win my brother. and say, okay, well, I'll, I'll use your tool. Yeah. Amen. You, know, you know what I mean? There's, sure. We all question things and we're all judging things and we're all analyzing things, whatever circumstance we're in. And... Sometimes uh, we challenge each other or we imply a challenge or what have you. But to a certain extent, charity is going to be willing to strive a little bit. And that's strive with. In other words, strive with the intent and purpose of bringing to agreement and giving everybody clearness so that there can be unity. So we endeavor you know, keeping the unity of the spirit is an endeavor. It's 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 an effort, Amen. and there is a, always a striving involved. Often, mm -hmm. where at face value you might think, well, there shouldn't be. You know, right? Like we're on the job. This is uh, these are the hotels God gave me to do work at, and so I'm the boss, and so just do what I say, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you could do you could do it like that, but yeah, it all it all depends. Mm -hmm. And like I said last week, sometimes. Sometimes God just throws you the curveball to humble you. You know, if, if I'm the head of the job and I'm heady and high-minded all about it and I'm full of pride, maybe God will blind my eyes and, and, and tell the subord show the subordinate something that, that needs to be done that I missed and have him tell me. Right? I mean, what, what is this authority thing anyway? You know, the, the kings of the earth, uh, the Gentiles, they love to exercise authority and uh, do this and do that, do that, and I'm, the, I'm in charge. And, and what did Jesus say? He said, it's not going to be like that among you guys. <laughs> the greatest guy is going to be the servant. And it's, so it's not, it's not always like that. Now, there are times there it is like that, times there isn't. But well, all I'm saying is, in all of this, everybody's got to be willing to strive a little bit and give and, and work together Amen. but god's not willing to do that much anymore Amen. because of iniquity and all of that well Pro proverbs 33 30 says strive not with a man without a cause if you've done thee no harm so you don't just don't want to strive on purpose or just to start a fight and uh you know i'm just going to do that to see if i can get you going you know no that's none of that's the spirit of christ no. There's no cause for that. And it's like like we always said before, God is not tempted of evil, neither tempteth he any man. Every man is tempted when he's drawn of his own lust. So does God do something to try to make evil stir up in you? Would God do that? No, he'd never do that. Ever, never, ever, 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 ever. So would the Spirit of Christ ever do that? No, no, never, no, ever, no, ever, no, not once. No, no. Would the Spirit of Christ in your brother ever do that? No, no. never, never, not even no. once. Because how about the Spirit of Christ in the minister? Would the Spirit? Never, 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 yeah, never, no. never once. You cannot charge God with deliberately trying to stir something up in you. Because He will not tempt. He does not tempt. Neither can He be tempted. All temptation comes from your own lust. Now God may allow it for something to be manifested. For some iniquity to be discovered, he may allow a certain condition of evil to stir something up in you, but he himself doesn't do it. Amen. The brethren don't do it. The Spirit of Christ doesn't do it, and ministers of Christ don't do that. Not you know, to strive, to chide, complain, contend, debate. You know, and there is, that's what striving is. The striving is you have to work through a disagreement or two people don't see things the same way and sure. all of that. There must be a willingness to strive with. Strive with. Now, I could strive against. I could, I could strive and make sure you can't accomplish what, what it is that you're trying to do. You know, you're trying to do a job, pull out a nail. I can strive against and take away your hammer. Mm -hmm. Or I can strive with you and say, here, here's a better way. Mm -hmm. I can strive with you. I can strive against you. Even, even an intercession is like that, right? I mean, we intercession is, you know, God makes intercession for us, for us, according mm -hmm. to the will of God. Elijah made intercession against mm -hmm. the sure false is. prophets. Right, right. Amen. You know, am I not grieved that take your name in vain? In vain? Do not, I not uh, hate them with a righteous hatred? You know, yeah. thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above well, thy fowls. Why? Because you hate iniquity. Yeah, amen. It doesn't matter where you see it. 
You know, I mean, I hate it in myself at times. Yeah, amen. You should. When I can't escape the inevitable conviction of my own iniquity. Amen. And I see the damage it's done. I see. I, I saw my own sore had me overreact to something. Now there's a, now I've got a breach with somebody. You know, hate my own iniquity, hate iniquity in other people. There's, but anyway, you don't want to be hasty to strive against or, or that sort of thing. Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Discover not a secret to another. Now this is something that was a little pet peeve of mine and I never did like it uh, at, at the farm. Like even with, with Brother Stare, if, if, if there's a job and uh, the job was given to me and I was, I was taking the lead on the job, yeah. we'd come back and inquiry, we, inquiry about that job would be made to every other subordinate mm -hmm. of how it went, what happened, you know, what did you get done, da 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 da. Exactly. And, and the guy who was in the position of authority to lead the job was never consulted. Yeah, exactly. Amen. Well, that's Amen. not right. No, you, you give account. We give account, right? That's Authorities right. give account. No, I, I'm, I'm not giving... Uh, uh, when, when God wants a minister to give account of, of, of his ministry, some other minister, he's not going to ask me what he did. Yeah, amen. Right? He's going to... You give an account. You amen. give an account. Amen. For we must all give an account. Oh. What? For the things the other guy did? No. no amen. <laughs> for the things that we have done our, our own bodies yeah, according yeah. to the works that happen mm -hmm. yeah oh, uh, anyway if there's any cause you know uh then debate it with the guy himself yeah, don't ask his friend uh, and, and and that sort of thing you know, go to him yourself <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's only right that's only fair sure. and that's part of striving well you know if there's a if you're going to do that if you have a cause and you're going to debate it with your neighbor of course, there, it could turn into strife, right? It could turn into disagreement. There might be something you have to work through, and maybe people are afraid of confrontation, so they ask someone else. But yeah, yeah. nevertheless, right. yeah, debate your cause with your neighbor himself. Discover not a secret to another. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, so I'll speak with uh, about the things that promote godly fear again. I've got to tr try to re rehearse some of this stuff, and even though it's, uh, you already know it. But um, so we're talking about strive in general. Okay, strive, and that is that is an effort. Um, that is a working of things out. That's something that you have to apply yourself to. It's going to set you back a little bit, right? I mean, obviously, if I'm on a job, and uh, everyone just does what I say, that's that's fine. If someone strives with me thinks that my instruction isn't uh complete or adequate because i haven't perceived something that they do perceive and they want to challenge my instruction then we have to compare our perceptions and we have to talk it through well that's we're, we're spending time doing that right and while we're spending time doing that work's not getting done so there's always a cost mm -hmm. but there's like i say it's got to be a willingness to do it in spite of that cost there's got to be and what i'm saying is it's it's inevitable it's an inevitable part of coming to perfection and keeping and striving, mm -hmm. endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And there has to be a desire to be at peace in the first place. Amen. Uh, there has to be, uh, every, and everyone has to be uh, clothed with humility. You know, mm -hmm. Everybody in lowliness of mind has to esteem others better than themselves. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if I'm the head of the job and the brother is a subordinate and working under me. In lowliness of mind, if he challenges something, then in my lowliness of mind, I say, well, he's my brother. Well, let's talk this through. And let's talk it through for either for his sake, so he can get clearness on it and we can proceed. Or let's talk it through because uh, in lowliness of mind, maybe God is showing him something that I didn't see. Sure. <laughs> you know, because as, as I said, you know, authority, the way authority works in the body of Christ is not the way it works in the heathen. Amen. It's, it's, it's not it's it's not the the uh the absolute the guy on top you always have to do everything he says or else it doesn't always work like that no. like what if you're in the war and the uh the general general gives a command for troops to move forward into the down the field but uh you know he's uh he's looking at the situation from uh 
from headquarters and he's got a surveillance helicopter overhead and he's that's his perspective but the private on the ground sees a whole bunch of uh camouflage maneuvers that he sees from the ground that the uh, aerial guy has missed because they can't see it because they're hiding in the bushes right. so the private might challenge the general say no general we shouldn't do that I know you think you should do that, but we're on the ground here, and because of, by, not by virtue of my authority, but by virtue of the uniqueness of our position. Yeah, amen. And a very unique situation. We're, we're seeing something here that you don't, and if you do that, we're going to run right into the ambush. Yeah, well, is that a time for the general to get proud and <laughs> arrogant and say, I'm the general, and what I say goes? Don't dare challenge my authority. I'm never wrong. <laughs> Come on down, gentlemen. Leave the charge. And of course, that's not always the rule, right? That could be oh. the exception. Right, right. That's well, all right. I'm saying is it's not as absolute yeah, amen. as some people make it out to be. Amen. God's always throwing the curveball to, to bring people and humble them and keep everything tempered in the body so nobody thinks of themselves more highly against amen. the other than they ought to. Amen. God's always doing that to temper the body. Oh, we preached a while back on, on why the, uh, the more uh, uncomely members are more necessary than the, you know, the more dishonorable members are, are more necessary than the, uh, the comely members. Anyway, this whole idea of um, demonstration of power and authority and all that kind of thing, um, just remember, too, authority and anointing and power and, anoint, and all of that stuff, it's the gift of God. So we're going yeah. to rehearse some of that again. Uh, but now we're talking about striving. And there's something that I preached before, and you all know it, but I'll just touch on it a little bit again. Uh, Jesus said, um, Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able... When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. Thou was taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom, and you yourself thrust out. So what I'm going to get around to here is to repeat the issue about authority and anointings and ministry and, and the demonstration of the Spirit and where that all comes from and why the presence, of anoint, uh, the presence of an anointing from the Holy Ghost or a demonstration of, of authority and speaking the Word of God in and of itself is no measure, no measure at all, no token of your status with God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, amen. It's not. Thank you, Lord. Uh, it, it, can, it potentially can be one of three witnesses that you are approved of God. But the demonstration of anointing does not mean approval from God. Amen. And so you've got to understand where the anointing comes from, how it works, and we give, we give the scriptural examples. Because here we're seeing clearly, strive to enter in a straight gate, a narrow way, Clearly we're seeing many people are going to try with the desire and the intention of entering in and they're not going to be able. And these people are going to say, but Lord, we were in your presence. Mm -hmm. Lord, you taught in our streets. We had anointed preaching. We had anointed this. We had anointed that. It's like people I know, people I know, I've even heard them boast that they were in the back room having an adulterous affair just before a service that they were preaching at, and then they come out of this adulterous affair and step on to the, uh, behind the pulpit in front of a bunch of God's people, Amen. and God greatly anointed that man, and he preached a profound message to the people. Yeah, amen. Right minutes after committing adultery. Yeah, amen. And the impre and because the power was there, because the anointing of there was there, and a not notable effect upon the people who were there, the man thinks, oh, you see, God still honored me. Yeah, amen. And I'm saying, no, God didn't honor you. No. God honored His Word. Mm -hmm. God honored the need and the hunger for spiritual things that was in the hearts of the people out there. And you just had happened to be the wicked vessel standing in the pulpit which is the only thing he had to use at the time. 
So he used it anyway. Well, and then that. See, so God is not honoring you. God's not honoring me. You know, he said, gird, gird yourself and, and serve my people, and then afterwards mm-hmm. you eat and drink. Amen. Does, he, does he go, oh, thank you so much for serving my people. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for getting up and teaching another message. Does he do that? Does God honor me for doing this? I trow not. He does not honor me for doing this. He says, get up there. This is your duty. I'm giving you a, a requirement. You have to fulfill this. And well, yeah, but like Paul said, you know, necessity is upon me to preach the gospel. It's a necessity. Woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Yeah, so whether I feel like it or not, whether I feel worthy or unworthy or anything else, you know, it all comes down to faith, isn't it? He that ministers to you about the word of God, does he do it by the works of the law? Does he do it because he studied so hard? You know, did he, did he do it because he sat under the greatest preachers of our generation? You know, no, he does it by faith. Amen. Sits up here, and I'm, I'm already saying all kinds of things I never planned on. So there you go. So the Spirit will move. You know, open your mouth, and I'll fill it. Amen. God will move, and the Spirit will quicken the speaker and the hearer according to the various needs of the body. And uh, you know that's why, to, to a certain extent, I mean, as far as teaching goes, it's good to put doctrine and counsel in order and sequence sure. and everything else. But on the other hand, if you're extemporaneous, you have to allow for extemporaneous kind of preaching because the Holy Ghost is going to cater to the needs of the individuals that are before you mm-hmm. whose needs may or may not match the counsel you had prepared. Right. Yeah, amen. But anyway, in, in it, one way, shape, or form, doesn't matter. Preach the Word. Preach the Word, right? Preach the Word. Be instant in season, out, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. The time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine. We talked about that last week. Amen. Keep to themselves teachers having itching ears. Sound doctrine has to be reproved. I mean, it has to be endured. Mm-hmm. The, what makes doctrine sound is its comprehensiveness, its fullness, its inclusion of many, many principles and precepts linked together properly in their proper order to produce a picture of doctrine, a picture of holiness, a, a vision of perfection that... that it's impossible to gainsay or resist. It's too supported with other yeah. scriptures. <laughs> and so that takes comprehensiveness. It takes time to bring out all the principles, put them all together, and, and try to do it in such a way that you get a, a precept, a doctrine, a vision of something that is, is clear. Like, like I'm going to try to do today with some of this stuff. So we're, we're kind of talking about striving and the importance of striving and... and um, Maintaining this uh, sense of godly fear that, boy, you know, we, we got to strive. We got to be serious. There's, there's v- lots of people are going to try to enter in. They're not going to be able to. A lot of people are going to be deceived by anointings. Yeah, amen. Deceived by yeah. anointings. The anointing of the devil? No, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And we were yeah. talking earlier today, who is Satan? Satan is the anointed cherub, cherub that covereth. He had a gift from God, actually not had, has a gift from God. And as we know, with everything else, for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Now, have you ever seen ministers or a man of God? And I've seen it, and you probably remember when I say this. They'll turn around and they won't like what another brother's preaching or saying. So they say, I, I take away your anointing. Yeah, amen. <laughs> As though a man has a power to take away a gift and a calling and anointing that God gave without repentance. Never. Now see, you've got to understand the characteristics of the anointing. Amen. Is that when God gives a gift, like the gift is working right now, the gift is, is working. Yes, sir. That's no consolation or rest to me. Because no. the gift this is a gift. Yeah, it's automatic. Know. It's just going to work. Just use it. Just, just <laughs> yield Amen. to it and it's going to work. Right? I've got to get my consolation from my own personal walk with God, right. walking in the light that I have attained, and my conversation, my lifestyle, my communication with God. Standing up here is not going to give me a whole lot of consolation about my personal status with God, especially with what God showed me about this stuff. Because right. lots of people have been sitting in the presence of God, preaching under the anointing of God. We eat and drunk in thy presence. God said, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. You are the workers of iniquity. But Lord, but Lord, was it the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Yes, it was. Cast out devils devils in my name, all that stuff in my name. 
Then I will turn and profess to them, depart from me, work iniquity, I never knew you. So I'm going to get into how this stuff works, and it has a lot to do with the uh, spirit of whoredoms. Um, all right, now, Jesus is in the garden. I'll say this too. Jesus is in the garden, and the Bible said he began to be in agony, right? Yeah, he agonized because he understood that he has to uh, somehow gird himself and find strength to do what his flesh doesn't want to do and walk in these sufferings. Yeah, and so he's wrestling with all of that. He agonized. Agonizomea, I always made this correlation. When Jesus says, strive to enter in the straight gate, that word strive is agonizomea, the Greek, agonizomea. Same Greek word is when Jesus was in the garden and he agonized. Mm -hmm. See, so the strife has to produce a travail, an intensity, an agonizing, an awesome, fearful awareness of just, you know, just uh, you start contemplating how few there are Amen. that find it, eternal Amen. life. You know, straight is the way that leads to eternal life and narrows the way and Few there be that find it eternal life. Right. Exactly. So this is promoting the, the godly fear that, that strikes us with that intensity and the urgency and the fearfulness. And that, that is, again, becomes an impetus or a motivation to drive us to strive to, to secure, make your calling and election sure. Give diligence to get, make your calling and your election sure. Sure. And you know, there's a day when I thought, oh, I got to strive to make my teacher's calling sure. But really, that's not the essence of it. Because yeah, yeah. the teacher's calling is a gift. You're right. It's there. It's there. I don't yeah. have to make it anything. It's just there. there right? I just have to learn how to yield to it. I have to learn how to exercise it. I have to seek out what's the proper exercise of this office in the will of God and understand that at the end, I have to give an account how did I use this gift. And, and did I did I did I build upon the foundation of Christ gold and precious jewels and in other words did I use my gift to promote the spiritual development of people the coming forth of Christ or did I use it to get cars and boats and planes or did I use my ministry to coerce multiple uh, you know sexual encounters and or for my reputation or for idolatry or for riches or for prosperity that would be a misuse of the gift. Use or misuse the gift. It doesn't matter. It will work. It will work. Yeah, amen. You step behind a pulpit from front of a bunch of people, gather together. There will be an anointing. There will be a presence of the Lord. The Lord will dwell among you for that period of time. Sure. It doesn't mean you're right with God. It does not doesn't mean you're God's elect. That's right. Yeah, amen. At all. Amen. We're going to find that out amen. and re revisit it. So you've got to strive. You've got to make sure. You would. Sure do. So straight is the gate, narrow is the way, it leads to life. Few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly there are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Whereby for their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work yeah, iniquity. Amen. Never knew you. We'll go to Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. You've got to work worthy of the Lord. You have to walk worthy, walk. right? We we're saying the other day, uh, uh, having given all diligence, add to your knowledge, add to your faith virtue, and add to your virtue knowledge. And we emphasize the virtue part. Because we heard so many times people say, add to your faith knowledge, add to your faith knowledge, which is okay, okay, add to your faith knowledge, but don't, don't forget the virtue. Because <laughs> you can have faith and you can have knowledge, right? And you, if I can have faith to move mountains and don't have charity, if I know all the mysteries and I don't have charity, well, charity is virtue. Charity is virtue. So... So if you don't have the virtue, the faith Amen. and the knowledge isn't going to do you any good. Because you're not, not going to know how to use it virtuously in, in the operation of charity sure. to edify your brother and stop feeding yourself Amen. with the exercise of your ministry. Amen. 
It's like I was saying a couple of weeks ago. You know, what if Ken, Kenneth Copeland has one point three billion dollars? Yeah, amen. Sure. Well, how does he? How is he going to get into heaven? Because the only way he can get in now is give up all one point three billion of it. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah. you, you, I, I challenge you, you go watch him. He has no intentions of doing that. No, amen, brother. That's the truth. That's right. It's, it's that serious. Yeah, here, those are the things of Caesar's. Give me a, give me a, give me a coin. Give me some money. That's Caesar's. Right. Render the Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Amen. These guys are making their boast, right? Mm -hmm. They have more than heart could wish. Pride compasseth them about like a chain. Gain is godliness. Amen, brother. Well... God puts them in slippery places. Those guys are in big trouble. Yeah, amen. And they got anointings. That's my point. They've got anointings. Right. Right. Listen to him preach sometimes. Every once in a while, he'll preach a principle. It's pretty good. Not bad. I listened to uh, T.D. Jakes preach the other day. And boy, he is a good speaker. I got to tell you, he's really a good speaker. Yeah. But he's out of context. Mm -hmm. He's building up Christian whoredom. Yeah, I'd say he almost he almost struck me like a borderline feminist, but I right. won't say that yet. But right. but and, anyway, yeah. but you see, and and you watch him watch his gift works. He has a profound gift, mm -hmm. works very well. It's a lot of principles are okay, and but what does that say? Nothing, yeah. nothing. Amen. Okay, listen. So walk worthy of this vocation. Amen. Be ye not under a wise, understand what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord for your gift and calling? If you're doing anything other than seeking out God's elect and ministering the perfection of the saints, because that's what the ministry is for, as we'll see Amen. later on. It's, it's not for big crusades. It's not for, you know, whatever. It's not to glorify the name of the individual minister or any anything like that. See, it's become iniquity. It's become idolatry. Amen. Remember... Uh, the Bible says that they they took uh, and they how did that scripture go in the Psalms? They uh, they made a golden calf, right? They made a calf. Mm -hmm. They honored and glorified the similitude of an ox that eateth grass yeah, yeah. instead of God. Yeah. They glorified yeah. the similitude of this ox mm -hmm. that eateth grass. Well, in the New Testament, how does Paul liken ox? Thou shalt not muzzle the yeah. ox Tread, that treads out the corn. Right. So the ox is the minister. Mm -hmm. See? So they glorified the similitude of the ox right. instead of God. Amen. The Lutheran Church. Calvin Church. Mm -hmm. Calvin United Church. Amen. They're glorifying the ox. The similitude of an ox yeah, that eats true. grass. Sure. None of those guys, Luther or Calvin, would ever have approved of what the men did to their name and make a denomination out of it. No, and you don't have to make the, the, the name of your denomination out of the name of a man in or, it, it, to, uh, to do things that constitute idol, uh, idolizing a man. Right. Yeah. And that's why God never has any single man with overmuch profile amongst the people of God. It's too easy for men in the flesh to start uh, idolizing and making an idol out of them. Amen. And God made a statement when, when you saw Jimmy Swaggart and Jimmy Baker judged and dealt with sure. because they, they were in a place of idols. And as we've heard other preachers say, and I say it all the time, it's not necessarily, I'm not saying it is and I'm not saying it isn't. I'm saying it's not necessarily that the man wanted to become an idol. He may not have had a uh, deliberate ambition to become an idol, but just because of the way the ministries are promoted and because they put their names on them and then because they get so much exposure through media and TV and radio and so many people know about them, it's, it's just the kind of the natural, inevitable cause and effect that they get lifted up as idols. Sure. So if God wants, yeah. to, if God wants to shake that idolatry out of the hearts of his people, then what does he have to do with the idol? The idol has to fall. So that uh, the people see, you know, he's not what you think he is. Glory. I'm Amen. the one you look to, Jesus Christ. Glory. Amen, brother. Looking unto Jesus. So you, you idolize a man of God, you begin to necessitate his fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that the hearts of God's people don't idolize the man. Yeah, yeah. Well, we heard all about in the uh, old days in the, uh, what they call the Philadelphia church age and all the men had... Their ministries after their own name, you know, sure. uh, R. D. Uh, what is it? R. W. Schombach, A. A. Allen, the, the Jimmy Swaggart uh, Ministries, Benny Hinn yeah. Ministries. The, yeah, exactly. That's all idolatry. It's like I preached once, you know, 
he, he took the penny and he says, whose image and superscription is on this penny? Yeah. Right. Well, what is the penny? You know, we all go out and work. God says, well, come work in my field. Well, you guys are sitting idle. How come you sitting idle? Well, nobody called us to do enough. Well, come on, work in my field and I'll pay you what's right. And at the end of the day, what do you get? A penny. A penny. Amen. Well, what are we really getting? I mean, that's symbolic, right? right. What are we really getting? Eternal, Eternal life. life. So the penny is <laughs> eternal life. Yeah, amen. So here, show me this penny. Show me this life. Show me this life. Whose image and superscription is on this minister's life? Whose image and superscription is on this minister's life? Oh, Benny Hinn Ministries. Well, Amen. depart then. Amen. <laughs> because our penny is the eternal life of Jesus Christ. Whose image and superscription is on our life? Jesus. He's the image. We're, we're, we're supposed to bear the image. As you're born the image of the earthly, you will bear the image of the heavenly. Amen. And the image has an identity. And the identity has a name. And the name is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So what's, what's your penny? What superscriptions on it? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. All these guys in ministries on their own name? Missing. They're missing it. Yeah. Amen. And they've got tremendous anointings. Yeah. And they're gifted men. Sure. And there are, they are fluent when they preach. Absolutely. I mean, they go around and they say profound things in principle. Yes. And I see they don't have any notes. Yeah. They don't carry a Bible. Wow. They just walk around the stage. Yeah, completely extemporaneous. It's coming out of them. Yeah. They're very, very seasoned, well-exercised preachers. Yeah, amen. And they're in the wrong context. Yeah, understand what the will of the Lord is. You've got to take Amen. this gift and calling. See, you've got to find out the gift and calling is without repentance. You can have it. I can go into a smoke-filled bar. I can walk into the strip club. Amen. I can walk into a casino in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And uh, my gift is in my calling is there. In the right context, I can start preaching and have an anointing. Because the gifts and calling are... Without repentance. Now here's another thing. I'll get to these things one at a time. In, um, in Hebrews, in, in the first covenant, God made a covenant with His people. Hebrews, He's talking about the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. Mm -hmm. And He's pointing out how both covenants were, um, were dedicated with blood. You know, the second covenant yeah. was the blood of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, he's, he's, well, he's, he's emphasizing the issue of blood here. And he's talking about the old covenant. He says, Hebrews 9, 18 to 21. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet will and hyssop, and he sprinkled both the book and all the people. He sprinkled them with the blood saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Yeah, amen. Well, as we said before, when Jesus rose and he was in his glorified body, he said, the uh, spirit has not flesh and bones as you see me have. He had, didn't have the blood because the blood he, he offered on the mercy seat. Yes. Oh, now, the, now the life-giving issue in his new glorified body was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. So the Holy Ghost is the spiritual blood. Yeah. You understand? Oh, yeah. So now, Life back then, blood. it was the blood of calves and goats that he sprinkled. Amen. Well, now, we get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the spiritual blood. Life is in that blood. So in the Old yeah. Testament, it's like I say, like the covenants, the, the particular objects of the covenant have changed, but it's a pattern. The pattern is the same. Pattern is the same. So what I'm saying is, you see this book? See this King James Bible? God put the blood on it. He put the anointing on it. He put it on the book itself. The book itself he put it on. And he also put it on his people. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. And he put it on the ministering vessels of the sanctuary. That's the blood. That's the Holy Ghost. Well, this King James Bible is anointed. The book itself is anointed. Absolutely. You understand? That means sure an atheist or a Satanist or a, a witch or a warlock can start reading the King James Version of the Bible. And, and, what, and what, what are you going to have? An anointing. Amen. 
blood. The blood. It's sprinkled. Yeah. It's part of the covenant. God yeah. sprinkled the blood on there. The living word. He said, this is an anointed word. Amen. The book itself is anointed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, it is. The ministers are anointed. The book is anointed. Flame of fire. Does that make the person, the Satanist quoting the King James Version, does that make him saved? Does that give him a good status with God? No, it doesn't. No, Absolutely no. not. No. you got to understand how this stuff works because the issue is worship and God Amen. is giving gifts and He's testing everybody. This is our test. Right. We're being put to the test. You know, I left you in these wilderness these 40 years to humble you, to try you, to prove you, to test you, to know what's in your heart, to see if you love God or not. I'm going to give you a gift in the calling and anointing. Well, I'm going to see, are you going to seek out what the proper exercise of this calling and anointing is for? Or are you just going to... Obey my law and yeah, or are you just going to go uh, get stuff in this life from it? Or, right. yeah, yeah. you know, misuse it to give yourself, feed yourself, pleasure yourself, what have you. Yeah, and that is a misuse of the anointing, right? That is a misuse of the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it constitutes blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because you're misusing spiritual riches. Absolutely. Spiritual commodities. It gets into the spiritual realm. Amen. That's that why. Is this a fearful thing? You know, you can have an anointing and a gift and a calling. Experience it. Know, know that it's working and, and, and understand all of that. Well, that's, that in itself, like I say, is no, shouldn't be a consolation to anybody. Mm-hmm. Not in and of itself. Yeah, but we'll find out. I'll get to a scripture in John where there, and you... you I mean, I'll say it now, but I'll get back to it, and you'll probably know where I'm going. But, you know, John says there are three that bear record in the earth. There's going to be a threefold witness of someone who has a true, good standing, approved status with God. Yeah, amen. It's a threefold witness. Mm -hmm. Now, the Spirit can bear witness. It can be one of the witnesses of it. But an anointing in and of itself is not. It's yeah, not. Sure. <coughs> no one should ever say that uh, because they had an anointing while they were in a condition of sin or sinning that God honored me. Yeah, right. so like yeah, I'm yeah. saying, God's yeah, not yeah. honoring you. He's not. No. I'm not honored. I'm not honored to have a gift of, of teaching. Uh, now I have a requirement on me. I have a responsibility. That's the only thing I've got is a responsibility. Responsibility, yes, sir. The scripture is clear on that. All right, so back to Ephesians. With all lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body, one Spirit. So you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. It's like I was saying before. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. With all. With all. Right, so if you have... A manifestation of the Spirit, any kind of gift whatsoever, whether your your gift is showing mercy or your gift is giving or your gift is a uh, uh, prophet, Jesus, evangelist, Jesus, pastor, Jesus, teacher, yeah, governments, helps, working yeah. of miracles, yeah, whatever your gift is, it's not given for you, for you. Right. Okay. And I was yeah. ch- challenging things that I've heard also, uh, where some would say, yeah. Hey, you think you're so important and you, you think you're, you're preaching something for the people of God. Well, it's not for the people of God. It's just for you. It's just to keep you in line, to hold you to your word. That's why God gave you that word, is to hold you to your word. See, it's not scriptural. Yeah, not even cool. Because everything everybody has is for everybody else. Amen. That's how God tempers the body. Perfecting of ministry. That's how he tempers it. Amen. Uh, it's impossible for me to have everything I need. Yes. God is going to deliberately give somebody else lower in rank than me mm-hmm. something that I absolutely need to have yeah, yeah. and I'm going to have to receive it from them and the communication of your faith the sharing of your faith becomes okay. effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing in you in Christ Jesus we have to acknowledge the good thing in Christ that's in our brother yeah, absolutely. And all of that has nothing to do, that's irrespective of hierarchy or rank or calling or anything else. Right. 
All right, so that's how God does that. Nobody ever gets anything from God just for themselves, ever, ever at any time. If you get something from God, you have a responsibility to deliver or share it or find out it's for the body. Yeah, amen. Yeah, Paul said, you all come together, and one has a psalm, one has a hymn, one has a doctrine, one has a revelation, one has a prophecy, one has a tongue, one has the interpretation of the tongue, and this, everybody's got something here, and let just let it all be done decently and in order. And covet the best gift, but I'll show you even a more excellent way than that. And then he goes into charity, right? Well, this is the whole thing. Faith works by love. Nice to say, uh... Whatever you love, that's what you'll work your faith for. If you love this world and you love the material things of the world, okay, and you love prosperity in this life, then you will use your faith to get all the prosperity in this life. Amen. Right? Yeah. And you'll preach the principles of God, mm-hmm. and you'll sow to the things in this life, and a lot of those guys end up reaping, right? Yeah, absolutely. How about the rich guy? He said, uh, you know, he was a rich young ruler. Well, you know, all these things I've kept, he said, from my youth up. Like, I've honored these commandments and principles from my youth up. Yeah, how, what did he end up at? He ended up rich. Yeah. So obviously, I mean, he wasn't a spiritual guy yet because the Holy Ghost hadn't yet been given. Men weren't really spiritual yet, right? So he was in, under the old, old covenant. So whatever he did in practicing the principles of God, he practiced them upon the things of this life, and he got rich. Of course, Jesus tells him what to do, right? Go sell all you have. You have treasure in heaven. Pick up your cross and follow me and... He went away sorrowful because he had great, great. Pos- possessions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's one for the prosperity guys. Get rid of all your yeah, possessions. Okay. Anyway, so uh, what we have is for everybody. Spirit Manifestation of spirits given to every man to profit with all. Everyone is given grace according to the measure. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high... This is Jesus. When he ascended up high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. men. Not just one man. His, not just one man or not just only the very elect of God. Amen. But he gave gifts to men. men. It shall come to pass that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. Yeah, amen. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? And that's when Jesus went into the lower parts of the earth and he preached to the spirits in prison and all of that stuff. And he brought that captivity higher. Yeah. Amen. That's another doctrine. But yeah. Okay. He that descended is the same that also ascended up far above all heavens that they might fill all things. And he gave some. Now here are the gifts. Here are the gifts. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. What? To start big Christian record companies and do great big uh, 50,000 uh, attendant crusades and go worldwide and... Now, I remember Morris Cirillo had a presentation once on his TV show, and he had this big curtain, and it was a scripture, without a vision, the people perish. Yeah, it was yeah. a great big thing. And then sure. they rolled back the curtains and if, to reveal what the vision was. Right. And his vision was the billion soul crusade. Yeah, okay. Amen. Like he was coming up with this vision. Our vision now is right. to minister and get a billion people saved. Amen. So and that's an anti-scriptural. Anointed too. Amen. Yeah, he's he's anointed, and he's an, he's another guy. If, he, if you ever listen to him preach on sure. on personal warfare between you and the devil, Amen. you'll learn a lot of good things from him about that. Amen. He's another gifted man, sure. but he's got the wrong vision. Amen. Jesus never went on a billion soul crusade. You got to go back to the uh, foundations and the patterns, Amen. right? Noah, how many were saved in Noah's day? Eight souls, Eight souls were saved in the whole world. Yeah. The days of Lot, how many were saved? Lot, his wife, his wife and his son's wives, yeah. and, and then, uh, or no, Lot and his, his daughters, oh, two and daughters, his wife, and his wife became a pillar of salt. Yeah. Proportionally, percentage-wise, right. look at those percentages. How many people are going to... That's the pattern. Few. It's definitely not billions. No, sir. Amen, brother. We're not going to... That that is a vision of the imagination of his own religious heart, yeah, yeah. and it is uh, probably motivated by an idolatry. We got a yeah, billion yeah. souls saved, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're not. Uh, you, you know, you don't want to get a billion souls saved, especially coming to the end of the age, where we're talking again about 
at the end of Jesus' ministry, he says, uh, okay, I want you guys, don't tell anyone anymore, anymore. that I'm the Christ. I'm the Christ. So there's no emphasis on street preaching, evangelization, getting people saved, so on and so forth. Right. The big move of God in the end of the age is that the people that are already saved are going to go on to perfection. Right. Yes, sir. There's going to be a tremendous, miraculous restoration of soul with physical healings and miraculous deliverances from the hand of the new world order and what have you because there's got to be people alive and remaining unto the coming of the lord and that's going to be the great demonstration of the spirit for god's people amen. not not any kind of emphasis on getting people saved no amen. because god's not striving with man anymore no. he's not striving anymore amen. well anyway i'm getting off track so he gave the, the uh, and this is they call a five-fold ministry, apostles, prophets, yeah. evangelists, pastors, teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body, body of Christ. Amen. We can go on and on. Not the edifying of a denominational system. And we went through, we all know how that the denominational system is Babylon, mother of harlots. It's amen. the Roman Catholic Church and all her daughters and yeah, that sprung out of her. I heard a voice saying, come out of her, my people. And you can go on and on. What's the name of the church? Jesus Christ. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ. You know, We're coming in our Father's name. We have no other identity. Yeah, we're, right. not, we're not church of Latter-day Saints. We're not church of Jesus Christ of the apostolic faith. We're not church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the apostolic faith. No. We are not... Lutherans, Catholics, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, or any any kind of such identity, we are the body of Christ. Amen. It's exclusive. It's very simple. Sure. You don't have to lose sleep over it. You don't got to get bent out of shape over it. Very simple. Right. Any other additional identification that you take is put, taking you out of the will of God. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we're not New Hope Ministries, New Life Ministries, Overcomer Ministries. We're not any of that. None of it. We are the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. I've come in my Father's name. Bone you, can, bone flesh flesh. you can stumble over it, and a lot of people do. Amen. Yeah, they, a lot of people do stumble over it. Amen, brother. All right, so that's, that's what we're here for. Those people, yeah. God's elect, the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, when Jesus was getting into the deep mysteries of the purpose of God, did you know he preached to the multitude, right? And then after he preached to the multitude, well, you know what he said, I'm talking in parables because I don't want these guys to get it. That's right. Because they're not, a lot of them are not God's elect, but I have to preach it and they'll be left without excuse and whatever. But then to expound the mysteries, he takes his disciples away privately. Yeah, amen. And they say, well, tell us the, 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 the mystery of the uh, parable of the sower. Okay, I'll tell you. Here's, here's what it is. He breaks down the types and the figures and shows them the mysteries of the kingdom. That's for God's people. Amen. Right. So we're not supposed to take this stuff to the denominational world, this word, word of perfection and the overall plan Amen. and pur you, purpose of God, which is going to bring me to the next point of uh, Thank you, Jesus. Abraham. And we talked about Amen. this today too. Because this is all in the types of the Bible. God has, God has his investment in the earth very much protected. He is protecting the people that he is perfecting, and he wants to keep them from worldly pollution and religious pollution. Amen. So, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith, knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we're no more children tossed from to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, cunning craftiness, Amen. whereby they lie in wait to, to deceive. deceive. Yes, sir. And we, we, came, we came out of a scenario like that. Yeah, a lot of craftily handled word of God and so on. So now we've been sort of exercised and exposed to it all and that we're recovering ourselves from the perversions of doctrine Absolutely. that uh, that make sin a light, make sin a light thing and uh, and uh, fall out, falling out to the profaning of God's holiness, sure. and denying perfection of Christ demonstrated in your mortal bodies, Amen. and see denying that perfection. Amen. So now we can't be uh, we can't be tossed to and fro by that anymore. No, sure. Okay. Amen. So we speak the truth in love. We grow up into Him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. See. Another scripture tells you every part of the body every is supplying joint. something, right. contributing something, a manifestation, yeah, yeah, yeah. a measure of grace given to you. 
Uh, this I say and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life, life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling or having a seared conscience, Amen. speaking lies and hypocrisy, searing themselves with a hot iron, hypo hypocritical precepts, precepts that deny and... Uh, hypocritical against the holiness of God and all that. Amen. Okay, they have given themselves over to oh, lasciviousness to work all uncleanness and greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. Amen. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation or lifestyle, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed Amen. in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. holiness. Amen. That's flesh and spirit, right? Amen. Put away Amen. lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. We are members one of another. Be angry, sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of the edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, but be put far away from you with all malice and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Now, I'm getting a little off track now, but we're talking about the anointing and the gifts and the calling they're without re repentance. They'll work in the world, will of God. They'll work out of the will of God. God sprinkled the book. God sprinkled the yeah, people. Right. God sprinkled right. the ministers. There's an anointing on the scriptures. There's an anointing on the people. There's an anointing on the ministers. It's there. Amen. It's part of the covenant. God, Amen. God, it's there. Right. So, uh, when Abraham, we find Abraham in Genesis 25. It says, "In the sons of Midian, Ephah, Ephah, Hanok, Abida, and Elda, Elda." or whatever, Eldea, yeah, all these were the children of Keturah. Mm -hmm. And Keturah was a concubine yeah, that Abraham had, yeah. I guess after the death of Sarah. Right. I'm, I'm, yeah, and Abraham gave all that he had to okay. Isaac. Amen. Now Jesus Christ is the heir of all things. God the oh. Father gave everything to Jesus. Jesus and we know in Galatians, Paul said the promise was not to seeds many, but to seed as in one. And that seed is, is Christ. But it, for Abraham, Abraham's promised seed was the offspring out of his own bowels, which was Isaac. Amen. Which it would come to, right? Yeah. And then God says, you know, and when, when, when God tells uh, Abraham to offer him up, right? Mm -hmm. He says, take, take your son. Thine, Thine only, only son, son, whom thou lovest. The only, the Amen. only son God recognized yeah. was Amen. Isaac. Yeah. Amen. Even though he had other sons from the concubine afterwards mm -hmm. and everything else, you see, the only people God recognizes is His very elect, the body of Christ. Those who are sanctified, those who have Amen. come out. Amen. The promised seed. Yeah, the promised seed. Amen. We are that only. We are the only. Son, he has like collectively, we're the son, right? Yes. Even those many churches, many denominations, lots of ministers with anointings and everything else. Okay, but listen right. unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had. Abraham gave gifts. Yes. Now go back to Ephesians. Mm -hmm. He ascended on a high and he gave yes. gifts. So here, Abraham gives gifts to the sons of the concubine. Who are not even acknowledged and recognized by God. Amen. And what does he do when he gives them these gifts? He sends them away from Isaac, his yeah, son, amen. while he lived eastward and onto the east country. The east country. Amen. So the imagery is clear. And we've heard about the wheat of the, uh, the parable of the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. He sends forth his angels, his yeah, ministers, his messengers. Yeah. Together. anointed men with right. gifts and calling gather these tares into, into bundles. denominational there bundles. Sure. You think those angels aren't anointed? Amen. Don't think God did yeah, not send yeah. them to do a job yeah. and gather those yeah, yeah. people into bundles? Amen. And he keeps the whole exercise and pursuit of, of whorish denominational Christianity, he sends it away from us. 
Send it away from Isaac. Uh, and then another another type is when Adam and Eve sinned and God put man out of the garden and he put an angel at the entrance of the garden with a flaming sword. And what is the sword? The word of God, right? Amen. A flaming sword and it turned every which way. Every which way. Every which way. So Amen. to, to keep the tree of life. The tree of life. Amen. You see this word of God turn this way to prosperity and turn that way to... Amen. Uh, soul winning campaigns that whatever right. the, the sword is turning every which way the people all wrapped up in that stuff right. to keep the way of the tree of life Amen. as much as we may or may not want to admit this God has a very very carefully protected uh, investment in yeah. the earth Amen. you know uh, 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 there, the field is the world and a man came and sowed good seed and another man came and he sowed bad seed and it, well where did these come from well an enemy sowed these Amen. these are the children of Wake Satan up. the children Wake of the wicked one Who, how did those people get into the world who sowed them into the world the enemy did yeah. how did we, he, we the very elect of God get in there well God planted us True. Right? Every plant that my heavenly <laughs> Father hasn't planted, we were born by the will of God. Amen. There's nothing we can do about it, really, one way or another, is there? No. Except that as, under, uh, as God unfolds His mystery and His plan and His purpose, we realize there are people who are born into the world. They were born there because it was the will of Satan for those people to be born into the world. Amen. They're, 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 they're not uh, good seed. They're not planted by the heavenly Father. Amen. You understand? So how how are those folks going to get saved? You can't. They're not going to get saved. No. We're getting into predestination, chosen in Him from the foundation yeah. of the world. Mm-hmm. But God got it all very protected, is what I'm saying. Sure He does. There's reasons why all this stuff happens. But then you see what's happening. There's lots of people out there with anointings. Amen. They're not accomplishing the perfect will of God to bring uh, the saints of God onto perfection. Amen. And a lot of them aren't supposed to be. They're supposed Amen. to be doing what they're doing. Amen. That's what Jesus, eventually Jesus said to the Pharisees, just let them go, leave them alone. Amen. They're blind. Yeah. They're leading the blind. They'll fall into the ditch. Amen. If you're, you know, leave them alone. Leave them both go together. Leave them both go together. And, and there's nothing going to be more vexing or frustrating than trying to get people to accept salvation by, by self-will mm-hmm. that are plants that the Heavenly Father hasn't, hasn't planted that right. cannot receive it. Yeah, there's, there's going to be lots of people, like I say, there's lots of people filled with the Holy Ghost, lots of ministers, lots of gifts, callings, and anointings. This is the whole thing, is that the, uh, the anointings and the gifts and the calling are poured out through Jesus Christ, the high priest, right? Mm-hmm. He had first descend, then he had to ascend, and then the Holy Ghost yeah, be, be poured out through him upon all flesh. <laughs> okay, Thank and you. the types of the Bible are there. Imagine that. Okay, so Ephesians, back to Ephesians, it says, uh, Paul's actually quoting uh, in Ephesians from from the Psalms. And he says, uh, Wherefore he saith, and this is quoting from Psalm 68, He ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. That's how he Paul quotes Psalm 68. Right. And he leaves it at that. Right. Now, when you go to Psalm 68, it includes one thing that's important. To again confirm, strengthen what I'm saying in all of this. Psalm 68, 18. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, also. that the Lord God may dwell among awesome. them. Amen. God dwelling among rebellious people. Oh, I, you know, I got in, in controversies with people in the UPC and one of the churches and things, and they say, oh, no, God is with us. You can't say God is... You know, and I'm saying, no, look, it's part of the religious horror. Even if you're speaking tongues, it doesn't matter because mm-hmm. they came out of the Catholic Church. You know, it's, oh. it's linked back to Mother Rome, and you have an identity other than Jesus, and it's still come out of her. Right. Oh, no, 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 God is with us. You, you can't say that. No, no, God is with us. God approves of us. I said, well... On what basis do you say that God approves of you? Well, I, I went to church Sunday. I felt His presence. Amen. See my point? Yeah. You know that that doesn't hold any weight. Just, just you you feel God's presence? Like I say, 
And like you know already, Satan is the anointed cherub. Satan is the anointed cherub. The gifts and calling are without repentance. Satan still has an anointed power that God gave him. Don't tell me Satan doesn't have power. Where does his power come from? All power comes from God. Powers that be are ordained by God. God. It's all from God. So what you have, you have Satan who has a gift and a calling from God and he's using the operation of God's spirit that God gave him and he's operating it against God. Right, yeah. Amen. And that's exactly what's happening. Right, amen. Amen. So God's ministers have the potential to do the same thing. They have a gift and a calling, and they can operate it and promote doctrines and perversions of doctrines that actually are against God. Amen. Right? Yes. Oh, God, we taught you taught in our presence. Yeah, he dwelled amongst the rebellious. Yeah. Oh, but we had the gifts and the calling. Yeah, I gave you gifts and calling, and they were without yeah, repentance. Devils. Amen, brother. But you, oh, here's what it was. Okay. When, when God was, was speaking to, the, to, the, to his people... Uh, and even before there was even before there was a golden calf, I believe this is, this is pre, before Exodus right. thirty two. Right. He said, "You shall not make with me, you shall not make with me, gods of silver and gods of gold. Right. So you shall not make with my anointing and my spirit. You shall not use my spirit and anointing to make yeah, a yeah, golden yeah. calf." Yeah. And, and 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 even even in the story of the golden calf, you know, Aaron says, "Well, break off all your golden earrings that you got from Egypt," and, and he put them in, the, and, and then the calf came out, right? right yeah. And Moses challenges him, and Aaron says, "But you know, the people's heart are set on mischief." Right. I just told them break off the golden earrings. I said, and I, I put them into the fire, and uh, out came out came this calf. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's almost like he, he's trying to shuck responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. But really, but, well, that's true. That there's the whole thing. Right. Jesus, Aaron was the high priest. You know, Aaron is in, the, in the Old Testament follows on to become the high priesthood. Amen. And now our high priesthood is Jesus. Amen. So here we got a bunch of people operating gifts and anointings. And they're throwing in all their golden, golden earrings and everything. And offering their works and their deeds and their efforts to the high priest, exercising their gifts and calling and anointing, yeah. and out comes this calf. Yeah. Amen. Jesus, the high priest, said, "Well, I I just did my job as the high priest. I'm holy and I'm harmless, and I gave out the gifts like I'm supposed to. Yeah, amen. I poured out the Holy Spirit upon all flesh, and the people did all this stuff, and out came the calf. It's not Aaron's fault, yeah. right?" And then at the end of Exodus 32, the Bible says, and the, peop- and the Lord plagued the people because of the calf that they made. Yeah, I think it says that they made. I'm going to just, 32. Anyway, it ascribes the fact that it was the people yeah, that made the calf. Right. Yeah, and the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Yeah. They made the calf, yeah, right. which, Aaron, which Aaron made. To cover it's the people that produce idolatry and golden calves and false denominational systems mm-hmm. that the high priest gave them the gifts and abilities and anointings to produce. Mm-hmm. So you see, it's on the people. Yeah, amen. It's a misuse of the gift. You can go on and on. God said, I polluted them in their own yeah. gifts. Yeah. And Hosea said, they knew not that they, I multiplied the corn and I multiplied the wine and the oil that they sacrificed to Baal. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. Right? So God even gave an increase to their whoredoms. He opened up his hand and satisfied the desire of emulation. There you go. Amen. Well, oh, I remember in the UPC. UPC is the fastest growing Pentecostal denomination in North America. Sure. Yeah. Well, so God's right. multiplying you, right? right. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. So see, amen. what what does that mean? Well, it means nothing. Yeah, amen. It's, it's cause to fear. You can do all these things and be deceived by the anointing and think God is honoring you. I think God is approving of you. Think, think that, that God is behind everything you're doing because you see some kind of result or increase and in what have you. Right. And it could all be just a big deception. Yeah, sure can. Right? So I'll send them a strong delusion. Yeah. yeah. With signs and wonders and anointings and 
ministers and that that's a very strong delusion, especially sure something with the presence of the of the Lord. Yeah, that the Lord God may dwell among them, even amongst the rebellious, the rebellious right. also. So don't say, oh, uh, God's with us and he approves of us. I felt his presence. That's that is as cheap, yeah. a cheap a line as I've ever heard. In, Amen. Amen. Right. Just, there's no <laughs> substance in that. There's, all right. Oh, we've eaten and drunk in your presence. That was taught in our streets. <laughs> You know, have we not done many? We cast out devils in your name, and we prophesied in your name, and we did many wonderful works in your name. Because you prayed. Because, because you prayed. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. How how can you say on the most fundamental sense? How can you even think like that when you know God is not going to give any occasion to iniquity? Yeah. Amen. We're we're in flesh. We need to take the occasion away from iniquity. It's like I heard Demos Shikarian say, well, I know you're not going to believe this, folks, but I prayed for someone and they got healed. And, you know, and I could feel the presence of the Lord, he said. And then he, I, Jesus tapped me on the sh shoulder. Yeah. And I know you're not going to believe it, he said. But he said, Demos, thank you. Yeah. Amen, brother. Yeah. That's Jesus giving thanks to a man for, <laughs> yeah. that's why that's see, that, that's polluted that's idolatry that's idolatry and then I have no doubt the guy prayed and people got healed I don't but you see what a strong delusion it can be don't be deceived by your limited understanding of the anointing and how it works and the fact that the anointing is going to work in, a, in or out of the will of God so God says okay here's a gift and the calling don't make God as a silver or gold out of it. Yeah, don't yeah. make a ministry with your name on it. Mm -hmm. you know, don't use the influence and the drawing power of the Holy Ghost you know, to uh, mm -hmm. turn it into a personal idolatry or mm -hmm. your own pleasure sinking. As right. Ezekiel 34 and Jeremiah 23, woe to the pastor, you fed yourselves, fed yourselves. Mm -hmm. What's the will of God? Don't be unwise. Understand what the will of the, God, will of the Lord is. Yeah. Perfect the saints. You know, they perfect holiness. Take that all seriously. Paul said, um, I'll go to that scripture. Paul said in Corinthians, and you all know this one too. Now, the fact that we have to strive and there's be so few that find it, we really got to zero in on this narrow way. And it's a fearful thing. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may win, or obtain, I mean, run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery, or the perfection, now when you're a master of something, you've perfected it. When you strive for the mastery, or you strive for the perfection of Christ in you, you are temperate in all things. So, uh, are you temperate in the amount of food you eat? Are you temperate in the amount of riches that you obtain? Right. Yeah. Is one point three billion dollars for an individual minister temperate? No, sir. You know, it's a fifty million dollar airplane and, and like three or four of them, so he can jet set around. Is that is that temperate? No, you're right. you know. See, you're temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. <laughs> I therefore so run, not as uncertainly. You don't want to be uncertain about what we're doing with our gifts and our calling. Right. We want to zero in. And get some kind of understanding and security and witness from God about this stuff. And so fight I, not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body. And bring it into subjection to the will of God. Whether you talk about whether it's this, whether you, you see that as uh, somebody keeping their body from performing sinful acts and deeds... But let's take it a step further. I keep my body in subjection. I make sure that when my body starts exercising and operating in the gifts and the calling and the anointing, I'm, I want to make sure that I, I am keeping my body doing that in a, in a context that is the will of God. Right? Amen. Not in a whorish way or not yeah. in a spiritually whorish way or something that is straying from the purpose of God. Again, the emphasis on the end of the age is going to be the perfecting of the saints. Yeah. Amen. We already know that God knows from the beginning who will be saved, who that won't be. We're already forewarned. There's few there be that, that find it. Yeah. 
We know that salvation is of the Lord. Nobody can be saved by the will of the man. You're not born by the will of the man. You're not born by the will of the flesh. You're not born by blood because your bloodline was some, like you were a Jew or you were the royal family. or You're not born by any. You're born because of God. God hath chosen you in Christ from the foundation of, before you were formed in, the, in, the, in, the, in your mother's womb. I sanctified and I ordained you a saint of God. That's more for more than just for Jeremiah. That scripture. That's more more when the Bible says to Jeremiah, before you were born, I sanctified you a prophet to the nations. Well, that scripture doesn't doesn't end at end at prophets. That's that's everybody. That's all God's people. We're chosen in him from the foundation of the world. Amen. So we gotta find out who those people are that God has ordained. We've got to be led by the Spirit so we all come together and we've got to work out our perfection. Amen. You see, so Christianity is not a service to humanity, right? Mm-hmm. No. It's not. It's not a service to no. humanity. Not now, if you have opportunity to do good things for people who aren't saved right. uh, in your individual life as you go on your life, the Bible says yeah. those opportunities are going to happen and let's do, as we have the opportunity, let's, yeah. as we have the opportunity, let us do good. But, right. but you're not supposed to obsess and try right. to create as many opportunities yeah. and go on a personal quest and occupy yourself in spending yourself to help as many unsaved people as you yeah, can yeah. by the will of the by the by your own will. Amen. See you, now now you're casting your fruit somewhere where it's not supposed to be cast. Yeah, absolutely. Amen, brother. And of course, we don't want to cast pearl before swine, right? right. Yeah. And I'm not. And again, I just I'm not forbidding utterance or good works or whatever as right. God opens the door for you and everything else. But I'm talking about the deliberate vision that people have. Oh, let's start a program. Let's go on a crusade so we can win as many souls as we can. That's not the vision that God has here. You're right. That's right. You don't. Amen. Especially if you're doing that by self-will and deliberation. Mm-hmm. Well, then we, those, you know, that's, well, we are taught repentance from yeah. dead works. Yeah. Like the, there's a there's a certain teaching that uh, the Pharisees. Uh, I heard this. Maybe somebody can confirm it. That the Pharisees are, believed that they were the ones that had to set up and take over control of the world for when Messiah comes. So they would try to get influence in politics and everything else. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's not the vision either. God doesn't care about this world. My kingdom's not even of this world. Thank you, Lord. Amen. It sure is. I don't need to set up a headquarters Amen. down here or nothing. No. I don't. I don't need a headquarters in uh, in the central U.S. or anything like that. Because that that is that's this world. We have a headquarters, the we New sure Jerusalem. Do. Amen. The mother of us all. Amen. That's right. And we don't have to vote because we have our king. Our king is Jesus, Amen. and you can go on and on. But we we have nothing to do with this world. Amen. We're try, coming out of this world. Now, okay, I'm sorry. Let me uh, get back on track. Uh, so I keep my body under, lest I should preach to others and be. Come okay. away. See, I have no, I have no consolations standing here and seeing an anointing flow through me. I mean, there's a certain amount of fulfillment, I suppose you could say that. You know, my meat is to do the will of Him that sent me. If it's God's will for me to practice and exercise a calling, there's a certain amount of. Uh, sense of purpose in the body of Christ sure, that I yes. that I feed off of by fulfilling right. that calling as yeah. you fulfill whatever God called you to do, whatever service, whatever right. carnal, spiritual, whatever. Sweet to the soul. Yeah, yeah and yeah. the desire accomplished sweet to the soul. But it ultimately is not my security about my status with God. It's not. No, it just helps you to live it. You see how <laughs> you see the nature of the gifts and the calling, how God gives them irregardless. Right. Yeah. He, no conditions at all. Mm-hmm. And he's hoping that you use the gift and calling to further his kingdom instead of your own. Yeah, amen. Absolutely. But if you're going to further your own kingdom and, and make with his spirit a God of silver and a God of gold, he'll let you do he'll it. He'll let you do it, amen. He sure and, does. And then at the end, oh, Lord, your presence was with us. We did all this stuff. Oh, I prayed and they were healed. Oh, and I did this and I did that. Oh, and we did it in your name and you were there and you taught in our streets. And who are you? You yeah, didn't walk in the fellowship of my sufferings. Amen. You never came to perfection. Amen. Amen. That's right. You never sought out what my real eternal purpose was. Amen. Amen. What I want, what I wanted you to do with the gifts and the calling. Right. Well, never really got to know. Amen. 
Uh, now let's go to First John. Yeah, so the we, we're running a race. We, we're temperate in all things. All things, yep. First John 5, 7, 8, and 9. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, mm -hmm. the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Now I'm going to take kind of a quick stab at this, and I'm sure there's more depth to it, but, you know, the Father is the eternal spirit. Mm -hmm. I was like the, the explanation that the only person here is Jesus. He was the only person. God as an entity is a spirit. Right. Jesus is the person that God revealed his image. Yeah. And then the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God, but it's not just the Spirit of God directly to you. It's the Spirit of God poured out through Jesus Christ, yeah, amen. which is very significant and important mm -hmm. because only Jesus Christ as a man can relate to your infirmities mm -hmm. as amen. a faithful, merciful high priest. And only the Holy Ghost through Jesus Christ can accomplish salvation. Amen. Be because there's a mediation work going on, right? I mean, we have sinned and God cannot look upon sin. We can go all through all of this stuff. And I, it, when they preach on the atonement, the atonement is really what nails, yes. nails yeah. that yeah. issue. How that Jesus yeah. was, was, took the penalty of sin that he didn't yeah. deserve. Mm -hmm. and, in order, and that upset the bal balances of justice for him. Okay. So now he has a, he has a right to petition God to give us the righteousness of God that we don't deserve right. to balance the scales for Him. Mm -hmm. Now, that's why the Holy Ghost is the, is the Spirit of God that's poured out through Jesus Christ. And that Spirit of God uh, can relate to both the pure, purity and holiness uh, of God and also the infirmity of man and can work out the reconciliation. So that no one can just have the Spirit of God directly. Every yeah, access amen. we have, every access we have, to God's Spirit is always the Holy Ghost through Jesus through Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's where the gifts and calling come from. They come through Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. He sent it on high. He gave yes. gifts to man and He gave uh, to the rebellious also and sent those rebels away from His chosen. Amen. They, those guys can go get wrapped up. I'm not going to try to stop the denominational no. system. No. You, got, you want to, whatever those guys, TV Amen. ministers want to do, go for it. You know, have have at it, you know. Do whatever you want. So there are three that bear record. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. The Father is the Spirit, and the Word is the sort of the formed image of God. The Word, you know. And then the uh, Holy Ghost is, is the Spirit of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is was the Word of God made flesh, as you know, right? He is the image. The Word is the image. And, but now, here's what, really what I want to focus on. There's three that bear witness in earth. There's three. Three. In the mouth of two or... Three witnesses. Let every matter be established. Three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, which would be like the Holy Ghost, right? The Spirit. His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are... Yeah, and then we can have a witness about each other. His Spirit can bear witness that, yeah, that's a true child of God. The Spirit, that's one element, the Spirit, mm -hmm. and the water. And for this one, I invoke the Scripture that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the Word. By the word. So there's a witness of the Spirit. There's a witness of this Word of God that's always washing, uh, washing out the false ideas out of our mind, always renewing the Spirit of our mind, strengthening us in the end. It's washing us, it's regenerating, it's renewing us. It's, it's washing us, having our bodies uh, washed with water and our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Yeah. You know, like when we mess up or we sin or we do anything else in the Word of God that describes the measure of grace that allows us to work it out. And we still must eventually overcome our sins, but we can still maintain ourselves in good status and conscience before God because we are walking according to what we have attained so far and we're not cut off yet, though we have sinned or though we, we missed it and everything. That water is washing you. It's, a, it's washing. It's washing. It's maintaining you. So there's a, that witness of the Word of God. The, the, the doctrine and the expounding of God's purpose. And then the third witness is the blood. The life is in the blood. blood. Your life. Yeah, amen. Your life. <laughs> so, it's, you know, your lifestyle. Yeah. 
The way you live your life. Yeah, like the, you what, what the deeds of, of your friends, the communication. Right. So there are three that bear witness. Okay, so a guy comes along and he's uh, he's got a just a tremendous, terrible anointing on him. That's the spirit. Wow, he's got an anointing on him. That's definitely a gift and a calling. Mm-hmm. And boy, is he ever a good speaker. Right. Okay, so that's the spirit. And then the water. Well, gee, a lot of his principles kind of sound true to me. That's that's very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. But but the ministry is in his own name, and he's very popular, and he has $800 million in the bank, and he, uh, right. Yeah, right. And he uh, goes on... Christian talk shows and whatever. whatever. <laughs> See, there's no blood. There's no life there. No life. No life. You see where I'm going with this? Well, there's a man. Wow, he has a really good anointing again. And gee, and he's really preaching some really good stuff on holiness and everything else. And uh, well, what? And, you know, every fourth day he's sleeping with somebody else's wife. So water, spirit, no life, no blood. Right. No, yeah, by their yeah. fruits, by their fruits. Right. So you know them. You need you need a threefold witness. Amen. Absolutely. You you see what I'm saying? Sure. That's why just an anointing of itself doesn't mean boo or hoot. I'm sorry. Yeah, it just necessary but not sufficient. Mm-hmm. But if you have the other witnesses and then you have the spirit, yeah. it can add strength right. to your overall witness that you are from God. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, as the Bible says about evil men, their folly shall be made manifest. Yeah, God will expose them, turn them over to the governments and courts and judicial systems of this land. If they don't want to be corrected in the church, then God will haul them off into the world to be corrected with greater severity, with with no mercy or anything else. You know, whatever. Is that that's That's the, the the churning of the Milk brings forth butter, and the ringing of the, the nose, nose brings, brings forth blood. blood. And right. So you want to force the wrath, wrath of God on you Amen. by striving against Him with a persistent, ungodly lifestyle yeah, and yeah. justify it by a deceitful mishandling of the Word of God. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And you want to profane the holiness of God under the so-called umbrella of grace. Yeah, amen, brother. Then you can go to your scourge. Because right. you are going to get the greater damnation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. Thing. Absolutely. So just take heed. They can be the anointed, most anointed guy in the face of the earth. Hey, Paul said it. I preach to others and I myself. You come a castaway? Well, you know, and i got to think of that for myself. Sure. They which preach the gospel should live of it. But Amen. rather than getting bitter and angry, and I don't believe I am against uh, when I see it out there, other ministers doing right. it. Amen. Well, should not make you fear then? Take heed to yeah, yourself. Then you take heed to yourself, of yeah. course. You it's like the Bible says, you know, if a man robbed and stilled and committed adultery, or not, committed iniquity and did all this stuff, mm-hmm. and his son which sees him says, yeah, that's wrong, I'm not going to do any of that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take heed, and I'm going to do what which is lawful and right. Sure. And God is saying, well, the, the, then, the, then the children are not going to, be accountable, be accountable for the iniquity of their fathers right. because they turned and they did what was right. Amen. You know, they saw the the example right. and it made them fear. Yes, yes absolutely. Right? And, and you see, when God exposes a man of God in, in the public eye mm-hmm. by using the world and using world media and all of that stuff, right. that, that's a method of rebuking. Sure or is. or that's, that's, sometimes that's like Malachi said, that, Behold, I will spread dung on your face. <laughs> your face. Right. Amen. Taking Amen. All, all the crap and dung of your filthiness yeah. of flesh Amen. and putting it over your face, mm-hmm. making that the image that people see. Yes. Your face, your image. Yes. That's right. He's putting dung on your face. Yeah. That, that's a form of rebuke, right. Right? right? Then God's rebuking that the others may see and fear. 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 Yeah. So you want, yeah, that's right. And but for the grace of God, we, we could go the same way. Right. And it's very easy Terrible to fall into this into this deception as, oh, I'm anointed, God honors me. No matter what I do, it's nope. going to be all right. Like I say, right now, at this moment, God is not honoring me at all. As far as I'm concerned, God's honoring you. Yeah, all right. I feel slack, like I never studied like I should have. I haven't all seen right. God like I should have. That's how I felt all week. Right. Right. Felt, felt like a failure. But you haven't. But... 
If you if, if if you guys are the elect of God and you need strength and I'm the guy I'm the goon standing up here, then he's honoring you, right? Mm-hmm. Which is greater? He that serveth or he that sitteth at meat? <laughs> There's the greater. That's right. So should I sit here and, and, and call you call you raka raka empty head, dough brain, peanut head? hundreds of times a day is that what i should do because you're better than i am who's greater he that sits at meat i don't want to puff myself beat you down with a bunch of derogatory um insulting names you know we talked about that that, uh raka you know he that says says to his brother raka you're in danger of the council you're going to be called into judgment what are you calling your brother empty head for Because yeah. what? What? Because you you get all the revelation and they don't. Yeah. Like you understand it and they don't. Well, listen, buddy. What do you have that you haven't received? Right. Exactly. God take that revelation for you. You're no different than anybody sitting down there that you're calling Raka, empty head, right. dope brain. Yeah. Amen. No, you don't. You don't hurl insults right. hundreds of uh, hundreds of times a day on God's people. Yeah. Amen. That's just not appropriate. I would go so far as to say. A man of God can get frustrated and then and, and use a word like that occasionally. But you know my, my whole point on that yeah, right. over all the years has always been... Uh, right, and, and the other thing is, um, you know, if you're going to if you're gonna beat your brother down, 40 stripes, and then stop it. Back off. Because if you do it anymore, your brother will seem vile unto you. Yeah. All you're doing is you're exercising yourself to, to be able to think nothing but evil against your brother. Because right. whenever you berate him or call him a name, mm-hmm. Raka or whatever, yeah. when you're doing that, you're not only helping him reinforce that on him, but you're saying it and you're hearing it yourself. Right. And if you do it too much, you will lose the ability to think anything good of your brother. Yeah. You'll yeah. only be able to think he's vile. Right. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. Mm-hmm. The Bible doesn't think doesn't say only think your brother is vile. Wow. Yeah, right. Amen. Right? No. You don't want to exercise yourself and train your own mind out of the ability to think anything of your brother other than that they're vile. That's why yeah, right. I said just somewhere somewhere in the exercise of reproving and rebuking God's people, somewhere in there there has to be included the thing where People of God are His delight. Amen. Yeah. Please, Lord, in whom is all His delight. Right. You know, God could be chastising you down to the lowest and it's because you're, you're a son and He delights in you. Mm-hmm. He can still have a delight. Yes. Amen. Please, Lord, and bruises. Son, well, we're talking about balance, right? Right. And that's, why, that's why after exactly. 40 stripes, stop. Right. And if you go past that, then... The only thing you're doing is that you're you're manifesting the fact that you're just beating people down out of your own sore and you're just grudging a, grudging them. Yeah, There's just, a st- just a place that you stop at thirty nine. Yeah, stop at thirty nine. Let's play it safe. Right. Exactly. Yeah, amen. I think, think there's a right. there's a psalm that talks about the evil man and it said. Uh, and let them let them wander up and down the streets looking. <laughs> let them wander up and down the streets looking like for meat, <laughs> looking for meat, and and let them grudge that he, when he's not satisfied. All right. Amen. You know, people are wandering around looking for meat, and they're mm-hmm. not getting it. And there's no sense of grudging and taking it out on the people of God. Yeah, anyway, right. so you see that there's three that bear record in heaven, the in, in earth. I mean, the spirit, the water, and the blood. They all agree in one. Yeah. The lifestyle is going to agree with the preaching and the rhetoric about holiness and perfection. The blood, the life is in the blood. The life is going to agree with the witness of the Spirit, which is going to agree with the doctrine. If any man consent not to wholesome words, even the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is according to godliness, godliness, that means godly life, godly deeds, godly thinking. Godly Thank use you. of the anointing, godliness right. on yeah. every level, godliness yeah. on every level. Yeah. Then if he doesn't consent to the wholesome words here, he is proud knowing nothing. He's in a chains of darkness. Mm-hmm. So 
the angels which left their first estate, which would not stay in their habitation. Mm -hmm. See, I have a habitation. I'm a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. so that's a habitation. That's a position. Right. I'm placed in the position. Then you look up in the stars, you know, the stars stay in their position. They don't move. <laughs> They're positioned in a certain location oh, and they yeah, stay right. there. Amen. Okay, so... So if I think, oh, I want to do missionary work in China, and I hop on a plane and go to China, and that's just my own idea, well, I've left my habitation. Or if I say, oh, I'm tired of being a teacher, uh, I'd like to yell at the people more, I'm going to become a prophet. Yeah, right. And then I try to exercise authority God hasn't given me. I'm out of my position, right? right? I've left my habitation. What happens when you leave your habitation? As soon as you leave your habitation, Jude says, Chains of darkness. Right. They left their first estate. They wouldn't stay in their habitation. As right. soon as they left their position that God right. put them in, as soon as you stray from that position, <laughs> chains of darkness. Amen. Satan was in his habitation. In light. Right? Yep. He was the anointed cherub. He's, he had all of He had the tabrets and the yeah. pipes and the right. music yeah. coming out of him. And he gave worship to God. He overshadowed God. He was the anointed cherub that covered. As soon as he left his position. Yeah. He wasn't God. He said, as soon as he said, I will ascend, mm -hmm. he left his position. As soon as it happened, Amen. as soon as he left his habitation, Amen. I beheld Satan fall as lightning. Chains of darkness. Right. No redemption. Amen. Absolutely. What's, this is the, what's your habitation? What is your position? Right. Find your position. Stay in your position. See, another thing is when you leave your habitation is when you start operating the gifts and the calling for something other than what God wants you to operate it for. Right. You leave your place. Mm -hmm. You leave your position. Your position is for the perfecting of the saints, right? God, The Holy Ghost is a drawing spirit. So when you're a minister, uh, God has a drawing that draws people to you. He's going to draw them to hear that word, that word of God. Amen. It's like we said about Hophni and Phinehas. Right. Okay, they were priests. They were supposed to minister to the, to the people. And it, their ministry was a drawing thing. It drew women. Women came to the door of the tabernacle. Right. So what did they do? I mean, they didn't leave their place and that they didn't leave their physical place. They stayed in the tabernacle. Right. But they left their place. They, they left their habitation of what their calling was for. What they're supposed to be doing. Right? What they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And they directed the worship that would have otherwise went to God. These women who lay come to the door yes, of the tabernacle. Sure. Yes. And through a coercion, right, he manipulated their worship to themselves in the sexual act. They lay with the right. women. Amen. They lay with the women that assembled. Yeah. Yeah. That's leaving your habitation. Yeah. Your habitation is to minister them to perfection. Mm -hmm. Not to defile them and, right. and feed yourself and, and exploit your position and anointing to do so. See that that that's what makes that that kind of sin not not it's not a simple act of adultery. Mm -hmm. It's exploiting, it's robbing the glory of God, it's a misuse of anointing and power, it's a perversion of grace, it's a spiritual sin. As you can see, the only thing that stopped Hophni and Phinehas was death. God killed them. They left their habitation. Yeah, absolutely. They had no place of repentance. Amen. They because they left the habitation, chains of darkness. This is the importance of staying in your in your, your place, your position. Right. And operating your gift and calling for the purpose God intended it for. That's part of staying in your place. right? Yes. So to look at it in Jude. The angels which kept not their first estate. First estate. The purpose God created them for. Yeah, amen. And, and left their right. habitation. Right. What did he do? He put them in chains of darkness. Yes. Alright, those are some of the more fearful aspects of how the anointing works and everything else and that's why we gotta you know really take it seriously and strive strive to enter in alright that's it I'm done